Okay, now real quickly, we have 24 minutes. How are we supposed to understand Isaiah 6? How are we supposed to understand the book of Isaiah? Every book is the same. We interpret them using the context. The first canon of textual interpretation is, what did God mean when he spoke to the original recipients? So the only way to understand Isaiah 6 is, what was God saying to Isaiah, and what was the world that surrounded Isaiah that God was telling Isaiah to reach? So the primary interpretation involves the, historic, the historical context, the geographic, the scriptural, and then the actual words, the grammatical. See, like when I talk about Hebrew words, shalom, shalom, it's understanding the grammar and the text, and that combined makes hermeneutics. That's the, the theological word for interpreting the Bible. So we can do that real quick. When you're talking about Isaiah, you're talking, you know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about the world from 740 to 680. It was a real world. Look at this, Elat Mazar, one of the most famous uh, archeologists in Israel, was digging around in Jerusalem and she found that, and this is what's on it, and it's probably, that's Isaiah's name. And since then, they've even found one that was nearby, she's dug more, and they found Hezekiah. So these are real people. And, and they lived in a real time period. L look, look where Isaiah is. Here's, here's Samuel the prophet, Here's King Saul that had no heart for God. There's David with a whole heart for God. There's Solomon, half a heart for God. Rehoboam, the bad son, causes the breakup of the kingdom. The southern kingdom is Judah. The northern kingdom is, is Israel. And they're going astray. And so God sends two prophets, Elijah and Elisha. And they still go astray. And look at this prophet comes. And right there in that yellow line is the ministry of Isaiah. And look what happens during the, the ministry of Isaiah. The Assyrians come in and wipe out the northern kingdom, the Assyrian exile of the northern kingdom. And then after Isaiah, the Babylonians come in and destroy it. Now, if you want to see all of the kings in order, because do you remember how the book starts? Isaiah, look back at Isaiah 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he says concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, right there, that's the tail end of Uzziah, right there. I couldn't get my yellow box around it because it would have wiped out my chart. And Ahaz, and Jotham, and Hezekiah, and by the way, he goes on to Manasseh, and that's how long they reign. Uh, 16 years, 16 years, 29 years, 55 years. So mi Isaiah ministered for about a 60-year stretch during the worst time for the northern kingdom, they're carried off into captivity, and during the total decline of the culture. And so that's what's going on there. Now, this is why I go to museums, and Bonnie and I uh, take students through and we've done this for 30 years through museums, and here are all the stuff you see in museums. And here's a museum chart for just Isaiah and these prophets. And some of the things you can see are these records that are in the museums of the world that actually record what Isaiah's talking about. It's the most exciting thing to see the historic record as the empires and see the Assyrian Empire is coming. Uh, first, they went from Nineveh down and got Ur of the Chaldees, where Abraham was. And then they started coming up into the Hittite area. And then they came down, and look where they swept by, Jerusalem. And they went all the way down and conquered Egypt. So they were the bulldozers, bullies of the day. And into that world, God called Isaiah. And he called him to a pathway of consecration. And I call it four secrets to a life that God can use.